So as you guys can see, I am nice and bare face for today's video. The reason being is because we are going to be doing our two month update and review on Jeffree Star's skincare collection. Now, I purchased this entire line the day that it launched a little over two months ago. If you did not catch my first impressions and try on of these products when I first got them, I will put the video up here in the cards as well as down in the description box. I highly suggest you check that out because I did have a reaction to one of the products, which we are also going to talk about and get into. And I've been testing and reviewing these for a little over two months now, you guys, comparing them to products that I already know and love. And I definitely have some final thoughts for you. Cannot wait to share everything. So if you guys are ready, let's get into it. All right, I got to interject for a second. Editing Alex here. So the deodorant that you see on my shoulder throughout the entire video is thanks to this new deodorant that I was trying right here. Uh, weightless dry spray my ass like so I didn't see it until I started editing this video you guys I apologize so it is on my shoulder throughout the entire video but I just was not gonna re-record it for a third time you know what I mean so just have a good laugh at it it happens to the best of us and uh yeah I would not recommend this back to the video welcome back you guys if you're new here my name is Alexandra aka the not so evil stepmother and as I said in today's video we are going to be getting into the nitty-gritty of Jeffree Star's skincare collection but before we do a couple of things that I want to say very quickly number one keep in mind skincare products are not a one size fits all uh, beauty category. You know what I mean? Like it really matters what type of skin type and tone and texture and your pH. And there's so many factors that go into whether or not a skincare product personally works well for you and your skin. And we all have different skin types and skincare concerns. So definitely keep that in mind. These opinions in this video are just my opinions and my experiences using these products. And I'm going to explain to you guys here in a minute what type of skin I have and all of that. Now, with that being said, I also want to say, because just in case you are new here, you know where my allegiances lie because I've been getting some very conflicting comments to say the least. So the first one is, why are you still supporting Jerry Star? Why do people still support this man? So let me just go ahead and address that. I do not support cancel culture. I will not support cancel culture. The reason being is because it always ends up affecting the unintended individuals or individual. So for that reason, I do not support cancel culture because you're not just canceling Jeffrey, you're canceling all the people that he employs and the single mom working two jobs, one of them at his distribution center. I just don't agree with that, especially when a lot of the times we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't really know what a person's true intentions are. And I no longer want to live in a victim mentality any longer. So for that reason, I don't agree with cancel culture and I just can't get on board with it. It's like the whole Johnny Depp thing. Everybody wanted to cancel him at first and now look what we're all fighting out. You know what I mean? Not saying that Jeffree Star is Johnny Depp, but you guys smell what I'm cooking, right? Okay. The other thing is whenever it seems that I give an honest opinion or review or critique on Jeffree's products, then I have the Jeffree Star stands coming for me saying, oh, you're just a Jeffree Star hater. Okay, so listen, I get it. You guys love Jeffrey. I totally get it. But here's the thing. I review products, you know what I mean? And again, it's not coming from a place of negativity or, you know, that I don't like Jeffrey or I hate him. It's coming from a place of nothing but peace and love. I am just reviewing products and I'm giving him a critique. You know, I understand he put his heart and soul into this and put it out there for the world to judge. But when the world is judging it, obviously you're going to expect criticism. And I feel like criticism should also be appreciated, not just expected, but appreciated because how else are you going to make this product better and improve it and make it the best possible product to put out there for your consumer? And I know Jeffrey does care about quality and people's feedback and he's made adjustments to certain formulas and, and brought back certain things and put out certain things based on people's criticisms. So for that reason, it's not, it's not coming from a place of hate. It's nothing but peace and love. All right. So let's talk about the first product. All right. Let's start first with one of the products that I liked the least. 
and I would have to say it's definitely the Jeffree Star Skin Morning Dew Hydrating Eye Cream. This is really just a matter of personal preference. I am not a fan of this. The reason I am not a fan of this, love the tip. I do love the tip. However, when you are using it, as you squeeze the product out, and I had a lot of comments saying, well, you're not using the tip to massage it in. Well, the thing is, <laughs> for one, the tip doesn't massage it all in, as you guys can see right here. Secondly, as you're using the tip and massaging it in, it starts to like get sticky. It starts to dry down and get like this tack to it. The other thing that it does is it has like some kind of illumination ingredient in there and it leaves like a little white film under your eye when you apply makeup or other products over top of it. As the day goes on, you can kind of see it start to peeling up. And I've only noticed that when I use this uh, under eye cream. And like you see, like it's more glowy and not so much glowy from this eye to this eye. So that is why I'm not a fan of this eye cream. The other reason I'm not a fan of this eye cream is because it just doesn't do anything other than give me a little bit of glow. Because it dries down and it gets tacky, it's not really that hydrating. I have way more, way better hydrating eye creams here. I mean, even the Jacqueline one, which I didn't even think that was that hydrating, I felt was a little bit more, or actually, I would say they're really close to one another, but I'd say maybe the Jacqueline's like just, just a tiny bit more, but yeah, just not a fan. Like if you're just looking for hydration underneath your eye, I highly, highly, highly suggest the Good Molecules Yerba Mate Wake Up Eye Gel. You're going to get the hydration. You will get that same little bit of glowiness, but with hydration, no peeling, none of the little whiteness. I mean, you guys have seen, I've been through several tubes of these. Now, if you're looking for something to really eliminate fine lines and wrinkles, you're gonna have to spend a little money, but I got a product for you. You guys have heard me talk about this. I did an entire video on this. I will link it up above and down below in the description box. This is by Skin Medica. I have completely used this product up. I am waiting for when they have a sale. I'm purchasing another one of these because if you want something that is magically going to erase fine lines and wrinkles, you need to go to clinical skincare. So you're gonna pay the price for it, but that is my review. Those are my comparable products. I just, I don't think that you guys need to spend the money on this. Just get the Yerba Mate by Good Molecules and you'll have a hydrated under eye area. Let's talk about the next product that I really didn't like and just cannot recommend. And let me tell you why. So this is the product that actually caused the reaction on my skin. This is the Jeffree Star Skin Strawberry Water Facial Toner. He made sure to point out that it was alcohol free, but the problem with this and the reason why it caused the reaction that it did on my face is because this has witch hazel in it. So even though it doesn't have the alcohol, it still does have the witch hazel. And there's other toners and stuff like the Elizabeth Arden. I couldn't finish using that because it gave me problems and I didn't realize back then that it was because of the toner. And for the price of this, I mean, let's see, this toner is $28. The one by Ola Henriksen, I think is $34. The one by Paula's Choice, I mean, $25. But the ones by Good Molecules, and again, and I'm not pushing Good Molecules here, but if you just care about the niacinamide and you don't want the stripping witch hazel, go with the niacinamide brightening toner. I really, really enjoyed this as a toner and it doesn't have alcohol or witch hazel in there. So, you know, a lot of brands, a lot of skincare brands, because witch hazel and alcohol are so drying to the skin and also can cause a reaction to very sensitive skin folks, they just omit using those types of ingredients in their products. So I was very surprised when Jeffrey said that he put witch hazel in his toner. I really wish he would just take it out and make it a niacinamide toner. If he did, I would say this would be 100% worth it. But because it has that witch hazel in there, go with the good molecules. But honestly, I really like this one, the glycolic exfoliating toner by Good Molecules. This is very comparable. It's like $14.99 or $15. Bucks. Um, it's just like the Paula's Choice 2% uh, BHA liquid exfoliant. They're very similar, They're like very, very similar. And I mean, so similar that you probably couldn't tell if you use one on one side of your face and one on the other. You couldn't tell them apart ingredient wise and how they feel. So 
you know, if you're looking for something that is not going to dry you out, if you have dry skin, but you still want to use a toner, I would go with this one. But if you're looking for the niacinamide properties, I would go th with this one again, 14 or 15 bucks versus what did I say? $28. So yeah, I just can't recommend this because of those reasons. So let's talk about a product that actually surprised the heck out of me. So this is the Jeffree Star Skin Repair and Revive Lip Mask. Now, before I get into my thoughts, I do want to correct some misinformation that may have gotten out. I don't know who put it out there, but obviously somebody got some misinformation because when I did my first impressions and try on of all this and I had that skincare reaction from the toner, I had a couple comments say that they thought it was from the lip mask because they felt like I put the lip mask on and then I put the moisturizer on and I accidentally got lip mask on my face and that they thought this was a lip plumper or it had lip plumper ingredients in it. And that's what made my face react. So the first thing, if you didn't check my ingredient breakdown of all of these products, definitely do that. I'll link it up above and down below, but this is not a lip plumper and it does not have any lip plumping ingredients in it. Now it does coat your lips and it does, because it coats your lips, it does give it that illusion because it's a little bit thicker of a product that it like fills all the little lines in and stuff, but it doesn't have actually any lip plumping properties. It's just a lip mask. And I was not very impressed, if you guys remember in my ingredients breakdown, by the ingredients in this product or the fact that it's in a pot. I'm just not a fan of the pots. I really just don't like them. I like more of like the sticks or, you know, the doe foots or, you know, squeezy tubes even, you know, big fan of that. Like the one from uh, Pat McGrath that literally looked like a lipstick. It's completely gone as you guys can see. So I'm more of that type of individual, but for this being a potted lip mask, as you guys can see, I've used it quite a bit. And this has been really nice for at night or just when I'm in my bathroom and I just need to put something on really quick. So that's mainly what I've been using it for. And if you compare the price of this, this is $16. The one by Bite Beauty was originally $25. That one is now $15. The one by Fresh is $26. Laneige is $22. Tatcha is $28. So if you're looking for a really good lip mask, $16, that's not bad at all, especially considering it's it's a really decent lip mask. I don't like the fact that it's in a pot, but if you're looking for a potted lip mask and you're into like the Laneige and the Bite Beauty Agave and all those, I definitely would highly recommend checking this out. I think you might like this. And then really quickly, if you are looking for a lip plumper and not a mask, but an actual lip plumper, I highly suggest this one from City Beauty. It's called their City Lips. And when I tell you that this does not burn your lips at all, it's the craziest feeling. It really is. It's not a burning. It's not like a, it's weird, but you feel it like not in a painful way at all. Like I'm telling you, you guys know, I don't even like barbecue potato chips. So I don't like the burning spicy feeling, but this is not that. However, it actually works. Like it really works. Like if you have like smoker lines in your lips or anything like that, and you're looking for a really thick lip mass type product that also plumps your lips. I'm telling you, you guys, this is it, man. I don't know why more people are not talking about this. And if you get on and look at the reviews of this product, they're amazing. Like I, again, I don't know. I'm apparently this is one of words and stuff, but again, I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. But if you're looking for a lip plumper, this is it. This is it. All right. But if you're looking for a lip mask, I definitely think the Jeffree Star price point and product wise is right on point. All right. Let's talk about the next product that I wasn't the biggest fan of. And this is the Jeffree Star Skin Magic Star Glow Face Mist. And as you can see, I have not used very much of this because Again, I just wasn't the biggest fan of it. I don't use, you know, facial sprays very often. I really don't. Like I've had this one right here from Glow Recipe, the Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist for a while because I'm just not a big fan of them. I do like setting sprays though. And I know he did say that you could use this as a setting spray. However, as I told you guys in the ingredient breakdown, this also has oils in it. And oils usually break down makeup and or make you more oily. So as a skincare spray, this is fantastic. 
but as a setting spray, it's very reminiscent of the Maracuja Miracle Mist by Tarte, which also claims to be a setting spray and also has the same issue. It's Maracuja oil. Maracuja oil is what you use to also remove your makeup. So when you spray this, you know, it removes your makeup. It's kind of the same deal here. Now it is very reminiscent of how it smells, not quite of this. Like this is a great setting spray, sorry to say. Every Star and Morphe are no longer a thing, so you can't buy this anymore. But yeah, I, I I would rather have this than this. I wish that this would have been in this kind of bottle because I like this kind of bottle and I really do like the sprayer on this. So again, if you're looking for a skincare spray and you're not planning on putting makeup over it or you're not oily, then I think this is great. But I think if you have combo or oily skin or you're trying to use this as a setting spray, this is not going to be your favorite product just because it does have oils in it. It is not going to set your makeup very well. It is going to make it run. It did definitely cause spots in my makeup the couple times that I've used it. So I'm good on it. Um, now, if you are just looking for a skincare spray, you can use under makeup, over makeup, and you're just looking to combat like a little bit of redness and stuff like that. I would definitely suggest the SOS uh, by Tower 28. This is a skincare spray that I have completely used up. The reason being is because it did work. It is a very soothing skincare spray. It doesn't leave your face sticky or tacky or oily or any of the things. It just soothes the redness and it's a great spray you can use under or over top of makeup. So I would suggest this over top of this if it were me or if you're using a setting spray and get the one by Morphe, the one by Jaclyn's really good. This has got a lot of skincare benefits in it as well. If you're looking for something just to hold your makeup, MAC Fix Plus. I mean, there's so many out there that are around the same price point. So again, that's my thoughts on the setting spray. Let's talk about a product that I would definitely repurchase again, but I do still have one small critique on it. So this is the Jeffree Star Make Me Melt Makeup Removing Balm. And as you guys know, I, I just love the packaging on this. It's so fun. And as you can see, I'm, it's almost gone. So I have used uh, pretty much this product completely up. And the first thing that I want to say is everybody uses makeup removing balms, makeup removers, uh, micellar waters. Everybody uses them differently. So let me tell you first how I use them. I usually use a makeup removing balm. I put it all over. I very gently, you know, use it around my eye. And then after I wash it off, I go in with the Bioderma micellar water. I will not use any other micellar water. I tried all of them. I tried Garnier. If you used to use the Garnier one, I'm telling you, try this. You will never, ever use another one again. But I use this to remove the rest of my eye makeup and then I go in with my cleanser. And now the reason I'm telling you this is because I had quite a few people say, you know, well, you didn't use it that much around your eyes. No, I'm not trying to push it into my eye to make my eye burn or be cloudy or any of those things. I don't do that with any of my makeup melt removers. I just, you know, your eye area is super sensitive and that's just how I choose to use my products. The second thing was a lot of people uh, commented about how I scooped the product out and then I applied it like this and then I went in and, it was kind of a joke, but also it doesn't really matter how you use the scooper. Like you could scoop it out and apply it like this, or you could scoop it out and put it on your fingers. And then it doesn't really matter as long as you get the product on there and get it rubbed in and get the makeup off of your face. But as far as that goes, this was a fantastic product. It really did a good job of removing everything. It made my skin very feel very soft, very smooth. I really did enjoy this. And price point, let's get to that. This is $32 and most of the other makeup remover bombs are 32, 34, 35. Some of them are 39. And I mean like the wishful one, that one's pretty dang expensive. And I've used quite a few of these, you guys. I mean, ones that didn't work out like the one from Elemis, I don't like. I don't like the one from Good Molecules. So, you know, this is not a great one. I do like the one from Drunk Elephant. I have many from uh, Pharmacy Green Clean. I've used the, you know, indie brand ones. I have drugstore ones. I personally, price point wise, would rather use the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm because it's very close to this. But I do like this. And again, I would definitely repurchase it. My only critique is that I wish he would take out that Red Lake 
ingredient. And that's the ingredient that gives it that pink color. I know, Jeffrey, you love pink. I totally get it. But that red lake color does make some people's eyes cloudy when they use makeup uh, melting bombs and removers. So that is my critique of that. I really wish he would remove that ingredient. But as far as everything else goes, I think this is great. I think it's a great product. I would definitely repurchase it. And I think the price is definitely on point with other products like it on the market. Now let's talk about a product I would not repurchase again and why. So this is the Jeffree Star Skin Strawberry Water Clarifying Cleanser. And just a quick uh, note, this did originally retail for $28, but right now he has it on sale for $19.60. So 20 bucks, essentially. I'm not really sure why. I don't know if everybody else isn't feeling this like I am or what's going on with it. But just, just a quick note. But, I mean, you guys, look. I have tried damn near every cleanser on the market from CeraVe, Tatcha, Drunk Elephant. got two from Skin Fix. I got both of the ones from Pharmacy, Ola Henriksen, Pearl Lees, Kate Somerville, Elf. I mean, Sarah B, you name it, I have tried it when it comes to cleansers and so have my family. So I, I don't want to say I'm a cleanser extraordinaire professional, but I'm working my way there for sure. And I just didn't like this, you guys. Listen, I know it's not supposed to foam up and I mentioned, you know, that it wasn't foaming up in my video and a lot of people were like, it's not supposed to. I know, I know it's not supposed to foam up. I know that Steve likes a more foaming cleanser. So that's why he didn't like this personally. But for me, it was really about just how my skin felt afterwards. It just, I felt like I could never really rinse it all the way off. It felt like my skin was still like, I don't know, like, I don't want to say slimy, but yeah, like slick feeling. It just, it left like almost like a filmy feeling on my skin. And I don't know what ingredient was doing that, but yeah, I just wasn't a big fan of this personally. That's me. I mean, it's on now so but that's my feelings on it my family didn't like it either I had my stepson test it my husband uh my daughter nobody was a fan of that so and we all have different skin types so if that says anything to you it just wasn't something we liked so these last couple of products are my favorites like I'm kind of saving the best for last kind of thing and one of them is the Jeffree Star skin moisturizer and couple things about this. Number one, obviously the packaging is gorgeous, but I don't care about that. What I care about is what is on the inside. And I got quite a few comments from people saying that they felt like this was the product that caused them to have a reaction or that they had a reaction with this product. This was the only product that they got, that type of thing. Now, let me say when the first couple of times that I used this, I did feel a little bit, and I don't want to say like a burning sensation, but it was very similar to like what you would feel if you use like a toner or something with a really strong AHA or BHA in there. It kind of felt like that. Very like much like, you know, when I use certain drunk elephant uh, moisturizers like the Lala Retro. This one, I, I got a very similar feeling the first couple times I used it. Same thing with the one by JLo. Uh, the one by Bare Minerals, the longevity line, that one did. So yeah, very much like that. Now the consistency of this is actually very similar to the Plum Plump Hyaluronic uh, Moisturizer by Glow Recipe. Although the, the feeling afterwards is not the same, but the consistency, like when you actually dip your finger into it and start applying it, it's very much like that jelly type consistency. And then as you apply it, it, you know, just really moisturize and like just soaks right in you know what I mean so it leaves your skin feeling very hydrated I do not however like using this product underneath of makeup I have other moisturizers that I really like for underneath makeup like the uh vitamin uh enriched face spice by Bobby Brown the one from pharmacy yeah lots of other ones that I like using underneath the makeup but this one I like using at night. It is very hydrating. Your skin feels very, very nice the next morning. And I really did enjoy it. However, I'm very curious to see what it compares to the banana one. If I have that same feeling when I use the banana one that I had the first couple of times that I used this one, um, because he supposedly changed the ingredients and, and added a couple of things in the banana one. And also this one's strawberry, that one's banana. Maybe my skin reacts better to bananas and strawberries, who knows? So I'm very interested to compare those two. Uh, so definitely if you're not following me on Instagram, 
make sure you are and I'll give you guys an update on my Instagram stories when I finally get that from Beautylish and try it out a few times but yeah I did very much enjoy this if you get this product um, I think you will like it as long as you don't have super super sensitive skin if you have super super sensitive skin I would you know just maybe do a little patch test and then, you know, kind of go from there or just use it at night. Same thing if you have oily or combo skin, I would definitely use this product at night and not underneath the makeup because it is definitely going to hydrate and moisturize. But if you have dry skin, you might like it before makeup. It just wasn't my thing before makeup, but I do love it at night. Lastly, we have my most favorite product that I will probably repurchase over and over again until I find something better. This is the Jeffree Star Skin Banana Body Scrub. And this did not come out two months ago. This just came out a few weeks ago, but I love this. This is so good, you guys. And I don't like the smell of bananas. Now, what I really love about this product though is the fact that it leaves your skin feeling very soft and very moisturized and it actually gets like the dry patches and like the KP and all of that. I mean, my arms, my legs, everything have never felt so soft and so nice and have just the least amount of bumps and just, I just love it. Love, love, love this product. But also I love the fact that it doesn't leave your skin feeling like it's got that coconutty type film. Like for instance, like the Frank body, like this is a great scrub, the coconut coffee scrub, but it leaves that like almost coconutty film. Same thing, the Kapari does the same thing. Um, Really like both of those, but it's not quite as harsh as like the Kapari because the Kapari has like, what was that? Coconut or no, it had also, well, it did have coconut, but it also had like little almond shells in there. This is not like that. This is a sugar body scrub and you can really feel like the sugar like melting as you're applying it. And then it like, as the water hits, it, it turns into like this milky color and it just leaves your skin feeling very fresh and hydrated, but there's no film on there. So I really, really enjoyed this product. And I mean, I've used a ton of body scrubs, you guys, but this I really enjoyed. So if there was one product, I would say is definitely worth it. And, you know, especially for $34, I mean, this is huge. Like if you look at this compared to all my other ones, like this is huge. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I think this is definitely worth it and I love it. And this is probably my favorite product so far out of his entire line. So with that, those are my final thoughts on the entire Jeffree Star skincare line, unless he comes out with more products, which I'm sure he will. And then uh, we'll be back for another one. But for now, uh, this is kind of where I sit with all of these. I really enjoyed some of them, not so much on some others. Again, keep in mind, skincare is very personal. It's not a one size fits all. What I like, you're not necessarily gonna like. It's kind of like mascara. You know, some people want a spidery lash, some people want a thick lash, some people want a natural lash. Everybody looks for something different in their mascara, just like they look for something different in their skincare. So definitely keep that in mind. Make sure you be respectful and be kind in the comments. It is okay to have a difference of opinion as long as you are doing so respectfully. Until next time, you guys, uh, we're going to be doing a three look, one palette with the banana fetish because this thing has just inspired the hell out of me. So literally, I'm going to clean off my desk, film this. I'll see you guys tomorrow when we're going to do this. I love you.